Hi, I'm Amy Gamper, backstage live at the 2024 Stansberry Conference and Alliance meeting. I'm here backstage with David Trainer, who is the CEO of New Constructs, an AI investment research firm. And he just spoke about uh, his company's technology and how it provides novel alpha to his customers. Welcome, David. Thanks, Amy. So we have some questions from our live stream viewers, and I'd love, to, love it if you could answer our questions. Let's go. All right. The first question is, your investment research firm, New Constructs, is at the forefront of the AI movement with the industry's first ever patented robo-analyst technology. Can you explain to our viewers how you've integrated AI into the core of your company's research model? Yeah, and I think this is a great question because so much of AI is misunderstood. People believe that AI is some magic formula that you, you, know, you type in a few lines of code and the machines just figure things out. That is not the case. Our AI is a really much more boring but honest version of AI, and that just means doing a lot of little things, creating a lot of very specific small instructions that we've built up over 20 years so that a machine can follow those instructions and replicate the things that a very smart human can do. It's kind of a nerdy way to put it, but the, the takeaway is, is we had to go through hundreds of thousands of financial filings and explain exactly to the machine how we wanted that data to be organized. And once you've done it enough times, then the machine can begin to take over parts of that process. Wow. And as part of that, the more the machines could do, the more sophisticated our analysts could, could be and the more filings we could cover. So there's, a, there's sort of a momentum factor there that once we get enough data into the machine, it can start taking over and the analysts can do more sophisticated things and we can cover more companies. But the takeaway is AI is not magic. Right. AI is real work. And the reason that our AI works is because it's based on the best data, financial fundamental data in the world. Right, it's what you're putting in. Correct. You have to have quality, quality data. And they've right. said that since I got into the business. I mean, we used to, used to joke, you know, the, the model is only as good as its input. Right, Right. Exactly. You know, calculate can be great. junk in, you're going to get junk out. Correct, <laughs> correct. Exactly, okay, great. Uh, most people typically look at AI through the lens of large language models and chatbots. Um, can you share one overlooked aspect of AI that investors should familiarize themselves with to benefit or gain an advantage from? So, Amy, the sort of the same answer to the, the first question, which is make sure that the data on which that chatbot or large language model is based is good. Okay. Because if, if you're sitting a chatbot on top of a bad data set, you're going to get hallucinations, you're going to get bad information. You know, just like we saw earlier in the day with, with Eric Wade talking about how, how do you know you know, right? Right. Uh, and he talked about how m much AI was messing up. Why? Because it's based on bad data. And so the, most, the single most important factor is to, is to make sure that there's transparency into the inputs. Because if they're not willing to tell you what the inputs are, mm. it's a red flag. Mm. You should be proud of your inputs, like we are, right? We're bragging about the inputs. That's all we want to talk about. Right. Because that's what matters. So if there's not transparency, red flag, walk away. And then if there is transparency, check, make sure it's good. And if it's not good, obviously you need to walk away. All right, and your, your company provides all of that. Absolutely. One, one, back, of the, one, of, one of the key features is we call it marked up filings or click through. And so if there's any footnote item anywhere in any of our models and you want to understand where it comes from, you click a button, we'll take you straight through to page 2024 oh. where that footnote is and where that data point has been collected. Wow. Okay. That's excellent. Um, what are your feelings on the potential direction of the market over the next six to 12 months? Well, our models uh, for the S&P 500 uh, and the, our all-cap index, the new Constructs 2000, are flashing some red signals in terms of valuation. Hmm. But that's happened before. Uh, and so we're not really in the business of, of like being market timers. As a friend of mine said once a long time ago, the Market Timers Hall of Fame has no one in it. Uh, and so we're, we are, we're cautious. We're really cautious. Now, the good news is that when you cover as many stocks as we do, we're still finding a lot of really good stocks. And in some ways, we're still mining our own proprietary data set to find better ways to pick stocks outside of our ratings. And we've got a lot of really great ones that we're still finding. They're not the popular ones, though, right? And part of the problem with the popular ones is they are so expensive that they are, they're really flashing a lot of uh, red flag signals in terms of just risk, just because when you get that expensive, uh, the bigger you are, the harder you can fall. Such as? NVIDIA. Yeah, tech stocks. Yes. Okay. N NVIDIA, yeah. Supermicro, Microsoft, um, Amazon, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the Magnificent Seven, we would say, be very careful. Meta. I mean, these are a lot of these. A lot of these are great companies. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in my talk, there's a difference between a good company and a good stock. Mm -hmm. A good company can be really profitable, but if the profitability implied by the stock price, like for example, is for Amazon, is to be, you know, have 50% of the global market share, um, you know, maybe all the good news is priced in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that, that ties in with the last question that we have um, in the next six to 12 months, the upcoming election, um, rising geopolitical tensions and inflation. All those things have investors fearful about putting their money to work in the stock market. Uh, with that said, which sector or investment theme are you most focused on entering 2025? I think it's a great question. We've been climbing this wall of worry for like, I don't know, 10 years, right? And everything has had to go exactly right for a long time. Like, I mean, uh, and it kind of has, or at least that's what, you know, Wall Street tells us. Uh, and so we think that going into 2025, it's really important for folks to focus back on fundamentals. Because for a long time, we've subjugated fundamentals to you know, the unknown, right? Wall Street doesn't want you to know how expensive this stock is. They don't want you to know how unprofitable it is because that's going to keep you from wanting to buy it. And so people have really sort of turned a blind eye. And that's part of the reason I'm really excited to have been able to debut my technology mm -hmm. at the Stansbury Conference, because this is going to give investors the opportunity to have radar around which of the stocks are most likely to blow up. Yeah. And which of the stocks are the ones most likely to outperform in good and bad markets. Okay. And so for 2025, we think energy is an excellent play. Uh, we think a lot of industrials are a great play. Um, and there are a few telecom in there. When you look at our sector ratings, those are the guys at the top. Uh, and so, but I don't really like to make sector calls, Amy. Okay. Because I think too often that's a substitute for really doing the work on individual stocks. So in any sector, okay. there's always good and bad stocks. Right, right. We, we tend to be you much more, like... yeah, you can't, just, you can't just paint everything with the same brush. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It doesn't work that way. And so we're, we're really specific in our, in our research around which stocks we do and don't like, but they're gonna be stocks that have very strong fundamentals, great cash flows, great, great returns on invested capital, and cheap valuations. All right, excellent. Well, we got through our questions. Thank you so much you're for your welcome. time. Appreciate Thank you. it. My pleasure. Thank you.